Good evening, everybody. I'd like to welcome everybody. I'll call our meeting to order. This is our regular city council meeting for Tuesday, May 17th. And we're going to start off with our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And we'll now have a roll call. Dave Frank. Present. Barbara Bynum. Present. Doug Glasbow. Present. J. David Reed. Present. Ed Uliberry. Here. All city councilors are present. Thank you. And are there any changes to the agenda? Uh, no, Mr. Mayor, there are not. Thank you. And now we have a couple of proclamations, and I'll go ahead and I'll walk over to the other side here. We'll start off with our proclamation for Mental Health Month, and I understand Laura Baker is here. Possibly not. So this is a proclamation proclaiming May as Mental Health Month. Whereas mental health is essential to everyone's overall health and well-being, and whereas all Americans face challenges in life that can impact their mental health, and whereas prevention is an effective way to reduce the burden of mental health conditions, and whereas there are practical tools that all people can use to improve their mental health and increase resiliency, and whereas mental health conditions are real and prevalent in our nation, and whereas with effective treatment those individuals with mental health conditions can recover and lead full productive lives, and whereas each business, school, government agency, health care provider, organization, and citizen share the burden of mental health problems and has a responsibility to promote mental wellness and support prevention and treatment efforts. Now, therefore, we, the City Council of the City of Montrose, Colorado, do hereby proclaim the month of May 2022 as Mental Health Month in the City of Montrose and call upon our citizens, government agencies, public and private institution, businesses and schools, to recommit our city to increasing awareness and understanding of mental illness and the need for appropriate and accessible services for all people with mental illness. In witness hereof, I hereunto set my hand and cause to be affixed the official seal of the city of Montrose the 17th day of May, 2022. Our second proclamation is for Motorcycle Awareness Month. And I understand we have Rich and Linda Fuller and others that are going to help come up and accept this proclamation. It's all right. Any of you that would like to come up can. And if you don't want to come up, you don't have to. And this proclamation is Motorcycle Awareness Month for May 2022. Whereas organizations such as the Gold Wing Road Riders Association, GWRRA, Motorcycle Awareness Program of Colorado continually promote motorcycle safety, education, and awareness programs to the general public and to the motorist community of Colorado. And whereas motorcycle riding is a popular form of recreation and transportation for thousands of people across the state and nation, and whereas it is crucial that citizens of our city and state be aware of motorcycles on the roadways and recognize the importance of motorcycle safety, and whereas state and motorcycle organizations across this country are conducting a variety of activities to promote motorist awareness and safety sharing the road with motorcycles throughout the month of May and will be reminding riders to be more visible to others and whereas the motorcyclists of Colorado have contributed countless volunteer hours to their communities and whereas all motorists should join GWRRA's Motorist Awareness Program of Colorado 
in actively promoting the safe operation of motorcycles, as well as promoting motorcycle safety, education, and awareness. Now, therefore, we, the City Council of the City of Montrose, Colorado, do hereby proclaim May 2022 as Motorcycle Awareness Month in the City of Montrose and encourage all residents to join us in supporting motorcycle awareness and safe motoring for all. In witness whereof, I hereunto set my hand and cause to be affixed the official seal of the City of Montrose this 17th day of May, 2022. And I see that Laura has gotten here. We, if you want to come on up. We've already uh, read the proclamation, but we can come up and take a picture. Now we're moving on to our call for public comment on non-agenda items. And we'll first ask if there are any members of the public that would like to make a comment on a non-agenda item. Seeing none, we will move on to item number eight, our approval of minutes, city council consideration of the minutes of the May 3rd, 2022 regular city council meeting. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve the minutes of the May 3rd, 2022 regular city council meeting as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. We'll do a roll call vote. Dave Frank. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Cough, to throw in. Yes. Barbara Bynum. Yes. Doug Glassbell. Yes. J. David Reed. Yes. Ed Uliberry. Yes. Mayor Frank, we have a unanimous vote. Thank you. Moving on to item number nine the youth city council report to city council and we have our regularly scheduled report led by coordinators michaela unra and kaylee roden thank you mr mayor so we will go ahead and turn it over to our youth city council All right, good evening, City Council. So it's been a great, successful year for the Council. We're happy to report on our progress tonight and for our vision for the future as well. Uh, so to briefly sum up here in this slide what our uh, vision is, I want to increase engagement with City Council, uh, also trying to bridge the gap between our youth with different activities, uh, particularly uh, activities pertaining to mental health issues, uh, it's like the one we signed the proclamation on. Uh, also expanding focus on local government, particularly among the youth in Montrose, uh, one of the primary purposes of the Youth City Council. <coughs> and with that also increasing our outreach to local partners, especially businesses and organizations which we work with on uh, those youth events. Uh, we serve as the voice uh, for uh, the youth in Montrose, uh, high schoolers, middle schoolers, all youth in Montrose alike, and uh, aim to help them with the issues they face in our community. Another focus of ours this year is the recruitment efforts uh, as we seek to uh, uh, bring on all sorts of people to the council uh, in hopes of building a, a strong council for years to come. So here you can see we have our Youth City Council impact. So we have our expanding youth voice with our community partnerships. So that includes partnering with different organizations for our events. This year we partnered with 
some other organizations for our Fun at the Field House event, and then we also did two proclamations this year, such as the Earth Week Proclamation and the Mayor's Water Challenge Proclamation. And then we have engaging a wide range of youth up there as well because we held a Fun at the Field House event where we were able to get youth from Montrose and Olathe involved on that event as well. And then we also tailored that event to drug awareness and prevention. And then we had also briefly done a clothing drive, which we'll expand upon here in a second, and helping those in need. So, And then here on our next slide here, you can just see a brief little summary of events that we did this year which our other youth counselors will elaborate on here in a second and then we also have two more events up there that we hope to be doing in the future such as a movie night and more rock the recommends so. so we did a fun at the field house and we decided to do this event to uh, promote staying healthy and to advocate against drug usage. So the field house was a wonderful facility to use for us. Um, we had the entire field for our glow-in-the-dark dodgeball game and we had the rooms off to the side for our murder mystery game. So a lot of kids came. Um, the attendance exceeded our expectations. It was a lot more popular than what we had expected. We were super excited. Um, Harrison and I were able to think on a dime and really use the skills we learned through U City Council to change things up in the dodgeball game as needed to make sure everyone was staying engaged and we really hope to continue to work with the rec center and field house in the future thank you all right so in um april we really focused on montrose um and the nature the earth um that week or that month um, so we had the Earth Week Proclamation and the Mayor's Water Challenge that we worked with you guys, which was so awesome to be able to partner with you guys for that stuff. Um, and then we also did a river cleanup at Baldridge Park in our new river, um, like water park type thing. And then we did a street cleanup as well on Miami. Um, and for the, all of those things, we partnered with Public Works and then you guys. At the beginning of our semester, we were asked to do per, uh, passion projects, and going further into connecting with the youth, I decided that a clothing drive would be perfect, because in the beginning of middle school for me, I had lots of experience with students who weren't so fortunate and had um, less clothing, and we were able to connect personally on a different level with those people. And so I wanted to pursue making a clothing drive. We had different donation locations, such as the Rec Center, Celebration Church, City Hall, and my personal church on the hill. Uh, there was lots of turnout. We had overflowing bins of clothing for all of us. And there was a lot of community turnout for everybody too. We had lots of clothes turned in. We also did this for the first time. We haven't done a clothing drive or tried to collect clothing or like feasible items to give out to youth specifically. And this was our partnership with partners specifically as well, trying to further on with them so we wouldn't have to have students or children in general have to pay for it as well. Um. This year for our UCD Council uh, semester, we had quite a few partnerships, as you can see. We had a partnership with Montrose Community Foundation, as well as Montrose Ace Hardware. Uh, we received a grant from them of $1,000, which was really great. Montrose Community Foundation uh, pulled in all the applications, and Montrose Ace Hardware uh, donated the money. Um, the whole process was really interesting not meeting every single week, but meeting every other week. So what we did is we would message back and forth. I would message the questions to my peers in the city council, and they would answer the questions accordingly. So the questions would be like, what do you plan to do with the grant? How many people are you impacting? Is this towards the youth? And in the end, we received the grant. Uh, we also partnered with Montrose Recreation District, the high school, Celebration Church, 
and Church on the Hill as our donation locations for the clothing drive. And then our donations are going towards partners who have, we have also partnered with. All right, we're really excited about our future and the future of Youth City Council. Um, we're hoping to really expand representation and collaborate with more organizations throughout Montrose. Um, just today we did outreach and recruitment um, at Centennial. A few of us went and had a presentation there, just trying to get more people and um, more representation for all youth in Montrose, not just the one from the high school, not just, you know, small groups. We want someone from every group to be able to show their voice. Um, another idea we had for the future is to be able to uh, collaborate with the regional youth council. So we have a council in Gunnison and it would be really cool to do projects with them just throughout um, Colorado. And then we also hope to strengthen our relationship with you all. Um, it was really awesome, like I said, to do the mayor wa mayor's water challenge and the proclamation with you all. Um, and we lo all love, we always fight over taking turns to be able to sit with you guys. Um, and we're hoping next year maybe you guys can sit on, on some of our meetings or come to some of our events because we'd love to show you guys what we're, we've been up to. Thank you. All right, and with that, we'll take any questions that you might have uh, for the Youth Council or uh, any of us in, uh, specifically. Any questions? Who's graduating this year and won't be on Youth Council next year? Myself and Harrison. We're gonna gonna miss it a lot. Okay. But we've uh, I know for both of us, uh, it's been an incredible, incredibly uh, valuable experience. Um, being on Youth Council, you know, it translates into good ethics, good communication in the workplace, in life in general. So I think for both of us, it's been a it's been a great experience, and we're sad to go. Congratulations, and I hope that means that we'll see the rest of you next year. Well, I think it's been great working with you guys, and some of the times you come up with questions that we have totally th overlooked or didn't give any thought to, and I think that's very valuable to, to the community. Thank you. Uh, this program was started many years ago, and I am really glad to see all the interest that uh, the youth are taking into it. I know there are a lot of other programs that the council uh, in past had uh, tried to initiate, but a lot of them turned into failures. And I'm really proud to, of you guys and, and gals and the work you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. We're all proud to be able to serve the community. And I'd like to just say on the behalf of City Council that we are all very pr proud of all of you and your engagement in the community and the way that we've seen you grow and mature over the last year. And we look forward very much to working together with you in the coming year. Thank you all very much. And now we'll go ahead and turn it back over to Kaylee and to Michaela. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So as we mentioned here, we do have two seniors who are going to be graduating and leaving the program. And we do have just a little gift for each of them, too, and wanted to just say a few words here. So to start off, Harrison, would you mind coming up? So Harrison has been on the Youth Council throughout his high school career. Kaylee and I have both been privileged to work with him over the past three years, and it is very bittersweet to be standing here. We are so proud of all he's accomplished um, and so grateful for all that he's contributed to the Youth Council program and the community throughout his time. We always talk about how nice it is to have Harrison there in the room. He connects each week with the Youth Council members, with us as coordinators, and with anyone in the community. And the wonderful thing, we look at him each week and he's always striving to see how we can do more, how we can improve on those projects and do what we can to truly raise that impact of Youth Council. So thank you so much for your service and it has just been wonderful to work with you and congratulations on graduating. All right, Gunnison Clamp. I'm gonna try to do this without getting emotional here. So I've had the pleasure to actually work with Gunnison for more than just on Youth City Council for the past three years. The year prior to that, he was actually a volunteer downstairs here at our visitor center. So I've gotten to know Gunnison through freshman, 
sophomore, junior, and senior year. And now he's graduating, and I keep trying to convince him he should just stay, you know, no big deal. It's just another year, and he is very adamant at saying no. <laughs> because he is a very driven, very passionate person when it comes to something he loves. And that really came to show true when it came to youth council. He's always gone above and beyond his work and the expectations of really even Michaela and I. When he started, he, it was a little tough getting him out of his shell, as I'm sure even council might remember. And he has grown into this young professional who I can guarantee no matter what he chooses to do in life, he will be successful because of what he's been able to learn. And something that I'm going to share with everyone here is that a skill that Gunnison has that we talked to him today about is he's able to look up to leaders such as you in pulling what he thinks is successful from each one of you to put it into his work. And I think that's a quality that a lot of people should have and Gunnison holds that true. So congratulations. We are so proud of you and we wish you the best on whatever you choose to do in life. Did you mention that they only have to be 18 to run for council? <laughs> All right, thank you. That's awesome. All right, we'll move on now to item number 10, our hotel and restaurant liquor license transfer application. City Council consideration of the transfer of a hotel and restaurant liquor license at 1032. 6450 Road from Kinnikin Processing LLC doing business as Kinnikin Processing LLC to Kinnikin Processing Company LLC doing business as Kinnikin Processing Company LLC for consumption on the licensed premises. And we'll turn this over to our Assistant City Attorney, Chris Dowsey. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council Members. Um, before City Council is an application to transfer a hotel and restaurant liquor license for Kinnikin Kinnikin Processing Company, LLC, located at, located at 1032 6450 Road. Uh, this is a public hearing for the transfer of a hotel and restaurant license. The, the permit is in order. The fees have been paid from city staff's review of the application. We have seen nothing that would prevent council from transferring this license, notwithstanding this hearing. Council can make a decision at the end of this hearing or defer for up to 30 days. Uh, at this time, I'll ask the applicant to step forward and introduce themselves to the council and address their home address for the record. Um, it seems we do not have the applicant. Um, my recommendation is to um, push this to the next council meeting um, unless there is any objection to that. Do we need a motion to table, a motion to, what, what do we need to do that officially? Uh, I believe uh, it, it should be a motion to. A motion uh, to continue? Yeah, to continue the, the hearing. So I would entertain a motion to continue this item to our next regularly scheduled city council meeting in two weeks. So moved. I'll second that. And uh, roll call vote, please. Dave Frank? Yes. Barbara Bynum? Yes. Doug Glassbell? J. David Reed? Mr. Reed? Yes. Ed Uliberry? Yes. Mayor Frank, we have a unanimous vote. Thank you. This item will be continued. Moving on to item number 11, Ordinance 2590 on first reading, City Council consideration of Ordinance 2590 on first reading, an ordinance of the City of Montrose, Colorado, amending Title V, Chapter 15, Sections 2 and 7, Regarding a sales tax exemption for a fee the state of Colorado is imposing on carryout bags. And again, Assistant City Attorney Chris Dowsey. And thank you again. Um, what this is before you, uh, as stated, is a sales tax exemption for a carryout bag fee that uh, will be implemented by the state of Colorado through HB 211162. Um, so you might ask, what is HB 211162? Uh, generally, this is a ban on plastic bags and polystyrene food containers uh, for certain stores. Uh, it's generally going to be for retail stores and restaurants. Um, there are more stores involved. Um, if you'd like 
uh, further uh, examples, I'll, I'll be happy to provide them. Um, so the state has put the onus on the municipalities to implement and enforce uh, as well as administer these fees. Uh, this will begin on January 1st of this next year, 2023. Um, it is a minimum of 10 cent fee. Each municipality may increase that fee if they desire. Um, the, uh, the fee is gonna be broken up into um, two parts. 40% of the charge, uh, so four cents of this 10 cent fee, will go to the business for implementing this fee. Uh, six cents is going to come to the city for implementation of this, as well as recycling. Um, stores that are subject to this fee uh, must provide on a customer's receipt the number of bags, uh, as well as the costs as part of this transaction. Uh, stores must conspicuously display a sign alerting customers about the carryout bag fee. Uh, stores may not refund any portion of the uh, money collected for the carryout bag fee. Um, there are exemptions to this, however. Uh, there's a small store exemption. A uh, small store is defined as a store that operates solely in Colorado, has three or fewer locations in the state, and is not part of a franchise, corporation, or partnership that has physical locations outside of Colorado. Uh, if a consumer is in federal or state food assistance, they will not be subject to the 10 cent fee. Um, the bags for uh, multiple uses, such as uh, pharmacy bags prescription uh, for prescription medications, bags to package loose bulk items, uh, to wrap frozen foods, meats, uh, contain unwrapped prepared foods or bakery goods, uh, laundry, dry cleaning, or garment bags are also exempted, and uh, food establishments within a school. Um, so why the sales tax exemption? Why should Montrose do this? Um, it's a fee that is mandated by the state. Uh, as a municipality who's being forced to implement, we have the opportunity to have as little impact as possible on the citizens of Montrose. Uh, additionally, the administrative burden on the city to ensure the uh, proper taxation of these six cents is likely greater than the revenue that would actually be derived from this tax. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions on this. Questions? Mr. Reed? And I would be quick to point out that this is not something that the city of Montrose has, is implementing or forcing on our citizens. This is something that is being mandated by the state that we have to comply with. And what we are doing by doing this uh, uh, tax exemption is just minimizing the burden on our citizens and on our staff, correct? Uh, that is correct. Um, administratively on our end, as well as the business end, to uh, just tax 60% uh, of this fee um, it, it, it's just difficult on all ends. Very good. Okay, with no questions, I'll go ahead and we'll hold a hearing. I'll open the hearing. Are there any questions or comments from the public? Seeing none, I will close the hearing and I will entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to pass Ordinance 2590 on first reading. Second. There's a motion and a second. Roll call vote, please. Dave Frank? Yes. Barbara Bynum? Yes. Doug Glassbell? Yes. J. David Reed? Yes. Ed Uliberry? Yes. Mayor Frank, we have a unanimous vote. Thank you. Now moving on to item number 12, ordinance 2589 on second reading. City Council consideration of ordinance 2589 on second reading. An ordinance of the City of Montrose amending Title IV, Chapter 4, Section 24 regarding planned development regulations to clarify the process, consent, and public notice requirements for applications to amend an existing planned development plan. And this will be Deputy City Manager Ann Morgenthaler. Good evening, City Council. This is the second reading of this ordinance, and no changes have been made between the first reading and the second reading. As a brief recap, this ordinance proposes to specify that if an existing planned development is amended, then only the property owner of the parcel that's being amended will need to consent to the application. This provides more flexibility for the amendment of planned developments to ensure that in our community we see development that matches with our comprehensive plan as well as the development patterns and needs of community members 
as, to, as opposed to continuing to have outdated PD plans that perhaps don't get implemented or developed over time. This amendment also clarifies that in the case of a PD amendment, the entire PD area, meaning all owners within an existing plan development, would be notified of a proposed amendment if it goes to planning commission, in addition to neighbors within 100 feet of the application. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions if you have them. Any questions from council? In the case, I will open a hearing. Are there any questions or comments from the public? And seeing none, I will close the hearing and we'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to adopt Ordinance 2589 on second reading. Second. We have a motion and a second. Roll call vote, please. Dave Frank? Yes. Barbara Bynum? Yes. Doug Glassbell? Yes. J. David Reed? Yes. Ed Uliberry? Yes. Mayor Frank, we have a unanimous vote. Thank you. Moving on to item number 13. Ordinance 2588 on first reading, City Council consideration of Ordinance 2588 on first reading, an ordinance of the City of Montrose, Colorado, granting and authorizing the conveyance of an interest in city-owned real estate pursuant to uh, item 19-2 of the official code of the City of Montrose, and this is handled by City Engineer Scott Murphy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so we discussed this at council, I believe it was about a month ago. Um, the piece of property we're looking at is immediately north of the Justice Center. Um, what we have is Grand Avenue right here. Um, the right of way actually is a little wider through this reach uh, to allow for future expansion of the intersection of Grand, San Juan, and, and Townsend. Um, so we're looking to preserve that, but there is a little tail of property left here that is related to um, this used to be kind of a hammerhead access to a, what used to be a city-owned parcel right here um, back before Grand Avenue was fully developed. Uh, that parcel was sold to the uh, Justice Center when they were doing major expansions back in the past. And uh, we have this little kind of useless remnant tail that was left. Um, as they work, the county works on their master planning, um, they came to us asking if we could help clean that up um, by uh, disposition of this piece of property. Um, so I guess one minor change since we talked about it at work session, uh, we referred to it as a right-of-way vacation. Um, digging deeper into the record, uh, actually this was, wasn't really dedicated as a right-of-way, it was a, more of a city-owned parcel. So semantics of how we refer to it um, gets referred to as a um, disposition of property in the ordinance. Um, there is, you'll see the screen line here is a sewer line, so um, we lumped it all into one to um, uh, dispose of the property, which would take the form of a deed if approved that would be signed by the mayor um, but within that deed we also reserve the sewer easement through there um, since that'll be other prop or property owned by others we want to make sure that that is clear that we still have um, right for the sewer and to main access and maintain it so um, with that happy to answer any questions for clarification mr murphy who are we conveying this to so be conveyed uh, to montrose county thank you any other questions from council is conveying different than selling? Are we giving it to them? Is that what conveying means? Yeah, so it, the ordinance authorizes a conveyance by whatever means we decide. In this case, it's so small and de minimis um, that we aren't looking to sell or, or um, appraise the land. Uh, just isn't warranted at this small a scale. It was our okay. staff's feel anyway. So conveyance can mean anything, but in this case, we are giving it. Yeah, okay. so the deed will read, you know, de minimis value, $10, I think, is how they it. And one of the reasons for that is that the value of the land would probably be not even what would it cost to get an assessment on that land. Correct, by an, probably an order of magnitude, yeah. <laughs> so who will do the work to convey the property if we have to do a survey or anything like that? Uh, so the Montrose County paid all of those costs. So um, the exhibit you see with the ordinance that accompanies this, um, in order to convey it, it has to be prepared and stamped by a surveyor. Uh, Montrose County prepared all of that, so it is no cost to us to do this work, just my staff time and legals to um, put the documents together. Thank you. Yep. That's a great question. Are there any other questions from Council? Mr. Reed? 
Uh, no, sir. Thank you. If there are no other questions, we'll open a hearing. And are there any questions or comments from the public? And seeing none, we will close the hearing and oh. entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to pass Ordinance 2588 on first reading as presented. Thank you. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Roll call vote, please. Dave Frank? Yes. Barbara Bynum? Yes. Doug Glassbell? Yes. J. David Reed? Yes. Ed Uliberry? Yes. Mayor Frank, we have a unanimous vote. Thank you. Now moving on to item number 14, moving Montrose forward, 2022 Street Maintenance Contract Award, City Council consideration of the award of a construction contract to Mountain Valley Contracting in the amount of $1,430,000 for completion of the moving Montrose forward 2022 contacted, contracted street maintenance project. And again, City Engineer Scott Murphy. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, so uh, I was out of town when this one first came up at work session. So um, I think Billy Ryan presented to you. Um, no major changes since then. Um, but for the benefit of the public, I'll do a quick overview. Uh, so this is kind of our last big street maintenance contract uh, this year. So the previous one we talked about was the surface treatments, which are specialized, you know, slurry and cape seals um, and chip seals. Uh, this is the other half of the project, which is the kind of street rebuilds, more invasive projects where we're um, redoing curb gutter sidewalks and pavement. Uh, a lot of mills and overlays or street rebuilds. Um, you know, when we say moving Montrose forward, uh, contract to street maintenance, so we have this kind of move mow initiative, which is a large umbrella for generally improving um, pedestrian and, and vehicle uh, connectivity and experience throughout town. Uh, when we talk about the contracted side, so there's portions of work that are done by our in-house crews. So typical crack sealing, potholes, patching, a lot of that's done in-house. This larger work is, is contracted um, and managed by engineering uh, because it's, it's just, we don't have the crews to be able to swell up and do this large of work in the summer. So uh, the public works and streets departments kind of prioritize and tell us which areas of town they want to go to. And then we work on the plans and the contracting and then management of that, those projects um, in the engineering department. Uh, this year's, I'll maybe just focus on the map uh, to kind of help people understand what we're working on. Uh, so this map is available on the MoveMo page if you go to movemo.co. Um, kind of hard to read, obviously, at this scale. But um, so this includes both projects. So everything in the red and orange are the surface treatment projects, and then uh, the other colors are these uh, overlays or rebuilds. Um, so you have Cascade up by Maverick, North Hillcrest. North First, um, little block of, I think I believe it's Cascade, um, right by North First there. Uh, North Third Street, uh, South Pagre, I believe that is. Um, this is getting down by Pomona School, um, the road in front of Pomona School. Um, and those are the, let's see, those are the major streets being done this year. Um, we, if you remember, some of these older maps at budget time had the overlay of, uh, a couple years ago, we overlaid Pavilion. Uh, it was uh, starting to deteriorate. A couple things that work against it. Um, increased traffic volumes. It was built a little thinner than it probably should have been initially. And then you have all those medians contributing water to the road there that kind of um, deteriorate or accelerate the deterioration of that road. Similarly, uh, Bridges Drive, um, East Oak Grove up to Bridges Drive, and then Bridges Drive out to, out to East Oak Grove was slated for an overlay this year. Um, that portion was about 650000 when we did the design we recognized that we were going to be over budget with that so that was the first one to cut because it was the the largest um, with that cut we were able to get the project um, with the bids into into the uh, budget but um, that is something that will stay kind of higher on the priority for probably next year's project um, you know long range as we complete 6700 and connect uh, bridges drive down through from 6700 road um, we'll see quite a bit of uh, increased traffic on this so we want to make sure that and you know, there's the extension there that uh, this road can handle that traffic um, so we don't lose it completely because then the cost to replace you know triples or quadruples um, so that's one change from the previous maps you saw uh, the other change was south third street so our south second um, south third uh, south third in front of us uh, um, between townsend and cascade kind of by south of the library um, between the library and i think it's cascade hall is the name of it cmus um, we were going to improve pedestrian connectivity um, pedestrian experience, parking, paving in that area. As some developments on the CMU campus came to light, or 
developed over the year, uh, we decided, or there's been this idea of uh, turning this area into an extension of the quad and creating a pedestrian plaza and parking area um, might be the best long-term use of this kind of campus area. Um, so there's a concept here included in the plan. Um, because of this project, uh, still there's a bit of design and outreach that would come with this. So um, we reserved the money that was allocated for that from this project to work on this kind of as a standalone independent project. Um, so um, with that, that leaves 1.43 million for this project um, that we're awarding the contract for here. Um, that's off of the 3.26 million when you subtract off that 400,000 and you subtract off the surface treatment contract. Um, that leaves what we have here. You'll notice the low bid was 1.51 million, so uh, the contingency was 10% of that, so we we're able to just reduce that contingency to get down into the budget. And then we will obviously keep a close eye on it throughout construction. And if scope needs to change or um, we need to modify the project um, in order to stay within budget, we all of our contracts are set up kind of modular that way. We pay pay for per foot of curb and per ton of asphalt, things of that sort. So we're able to kind of control our fate and make sure the project stays within budget. Um, as far as schedule, so the most of the, most of the contractors are pretty busy um, already, and so a lot of this work will be happening later in the summer. Um, the one exception to that is we do have milestones for the work around Pomona Elementary School to make sure that that's done um, before school starting. Um, but otherwise, you'll see a lot of this work taking place late summer, early fall, um, and should be done by the end, by Halloween, essentially. Um, when we're working on streets, there are a lot of times full rebuilds or overlays, so we'll um, work to maintain access to local traffic with you know ramps to driveways or preserve their alley access. Um, but otherwise, the streets will be closed to through traffic. Um, and you can expect on any given closure, um, you know, concrete work will take place on the shoulders, so it's a little less impactful. Uh, but once we're into the pavement and rebuilding the road itself, usually you can expect two to three weeks of closure um, for any given street that's um, being worked on. The nice part about a lot of this work is there's, it's part of the old town which has a, lot of, has a grid, so there's usually really great ways around. Um, so we don't expect it to be overly impactful. Um, and we did, um, the areas that are being done around businesses, so north first, um, we've had the contractor make sure that they condense their schedule there um, to minimize business, or business access disruptions throughout that work. That's it. Happy to answer any questions. Very thorough explanation. Thank you. <laughs> um, are there any questions from council? Mr. Reed? Uh, no, sir. Thank you. No, but S Scott, the map is really helpful. Um, but I have a hard time seeing the blue and the green compared to the red. I, I don't know. Um, the difference between yeah the colors the blue and the green just don't jump out as much so at first I really I was like anyway that would just be feedback on maybe making it more obvious yeah it's a really easy two minute change so we can update that update on the website as well that would be helpful yep. all right we'll accept any public comment and seeing none would consider a motion mr. mayor I move that we approve the award of a construction contract to Mountain Valley contracting in the amount of one million four hundred and thirty thousand dollars for completion of the moving Montrose forward 2022 contract street maintenance project as presented I'll second that we have a motion and a second roll call vote please Dave Frank yes Barbara Bynum yes Doug Glassbell yes Jim David Reed yes Ed Uliberry Mayor Frank, we have a unanimous vote. Thank you. And I'd like to point out that, that it's great to seeing that the uh, streets are keep, keeping on our radar constantly. So our citizens understand that even though sometimes it's a little frustrating with the closures, that we're really doing a lot of work on our streets to make them better and safer. Thank you. All right, staff reports. And our first up is Finance Director Shaney Wittenberg with our sales use and excise tax report. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and City Council. Uh, let me share my screen. All right, so let me go to the beginning. All right, so this is the sales use and excise tax collection report for March of 2022. 
General fund sales and use tax is collected at 3%. March, compared to March of 2021, retail sales tax is up 11.8%. Construction use tax up 13.5%. Use and auto use tax up 8%, with total collections up 11.6%, and a positive budget variance of 67.1%. Year-to-date sales and use tax, retail sales tax is up 13.7%, or approximately $621,000. Construction use tax up 43.3% or $81,000. Use and auto use tax up 7.6% or $26,000 with total collections up 14.3% or $728,000. A positive budget variance year to date of 45% or approximately $1.8 million. More has been collected than we budgeted. Public safety sales and use tax. This um, began January 1 of 2020. We added 0.58 percent per the vote on November 5, 2019. March, compared to March of 2021, retail sales tax is up 11.7 percent. Construction use tax is down 19.2 percent. Use and auto use tax is up 8 percent, with total collections up 10.1 percent and a positive budget variance of 27 percent. Year-to-date, public safety fund retail sales tax is up 13.7% or approximately $120,000. Construction use tax is up 31.6% or $13,000. Use and auto use tax is up 7.6% or about $5,000. And total collections are up 14% or approximately $138,000. Budget variance is positive at 31.5% or $270,000 more has been collected than we budgeted for. Oh, went too far. Uh, Montrose Recreation District, back in 2014, the voters approved a 0.3% sales tax to be added, sales and use tax, um, to assist with the financing of the Community Recreation Center. In March, we collected $220,486, or 10.1% more than we did in 2021. Year-to-date, we've collected $584,158, or 14% more through the first quarter of 2022. Excise taxes, hotel excise tax adds 0.9%, restaurant excise tax adds 0.8% to our total tax rate. And in March, compared to March of 2021, hotel excise tax is up 39.6%. Restaurant excise tax is up 8.7%, with total collections up 12.9%, with positive budget variance of 30.4%. Year-to-date collections for hotel excise tax up 41.4%, or $7,000. Restaurant excise tax is up 10.9%, or $13,000, with total collections up 14.9%, or approximately $20,000. Budget Variance there is positive as well at 32.7% or $39,000. Retail sales enhancement. This is the portion of the vendor's fee that retailers give up to promote retail sales in Montrose. In March, we collected $52,537 or 11.2% more than we did in March of 2021. Year to date, we've collected $137,107 or 13.4% more than we did year-to-date in 2021, and that equates to $16,000. So with that, I'll take any questions you may have. Any questions from Council? All right. Um, Very good. If I'll move on to your next presentation, that'd be great. Okay. So um, It's nice to do the sales and use tax report before we do the budget review. So you see that we are doing very well as far as revenues um, in the general fund and the public safety fund. As well, we are in water, sewer, trash, and um, the golf course. We usually just present in the memo the the major funds or the interesting funds. Um, So with that, the memo is in your packet. There's nothing that has jumped out at me as being some sort of an issue Um, so if you have any questions I'd be happy to answer them or if you want me to go into any more detail I can do that as well just in our packet that it shows that everything was really proportional to this time of year are are both on our 
revenues collected and expenses paid. Right, correct. Are there any other questions from council? Mr. Reed? Uh, no, sir. Excellent, thank you. You're welcome, thank you. Are there any other staff reports or staff comments? I have one. I just got approval to share this news and I think it's circulating so you may already know but um, there was a proposal for by a developer who's interested in building housing next to the rec center. Um, they are proposing they were proposing to work with the Colorado Housing and Finance Association to get tax credits for that development. Um, they're proposing units that are affordable and um, allocated based on income levels and then um, the price of those units are priced accordingly to what people can afford. And that project received tax credits from Traffa. So that project will happen. It was an incredibly competitive round. Um, as we know, lots of communities in Colorado are having um, housing challenges and need housing for people who seek this type of accommodation or it's based on their income. So um, I think it's something for our community to be very proud of that Chaffa awarded it to a development here in Montrose. And I'm looking forward to partnering with the developers as they work to build this project. And um, we'll have more information about the timeline soon, um, but I wanted to share that news with you tonight. Excellent. Well, we saw a presentation on this at work session a while back. And I'm assuming we're gonna be seeing more of that to come in the future. Yes, um, I don't know if they're gonna put the units in one building or two buildings or three buildings on their site. Um, so that, that'll dictate their development process moving forward. Um, but I do know that they're interested in working with the council on partnerships to make this project as affordable as possible um, for the people who'll be living in this building. So um, please stay tuned and they're, they're excited to work in Montrose. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Any questions for Ann on that one? Any other staff comments? You can give a, give a couple of quick project updates if you'd like. Outstanding. Um, we talked about them at work session, but also just since we might have more at this audience here today. Um, so very, 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 very excited to announce that the utility work on Townsend is generally complete. Um, there's one small patch left at Montrose Drive and South 12th, um, but beyond that, the work is done, the line is in operation and uh, we, we couldn't be more excited. Um, on Townsend, the work that's taking place now is CDOT, uh, so they're working on their overlay um, primarily at night, um, but they are doing some bridge work, which uh, if anybody's seen, there is a closure of the trail underpass from, I think it starts at 7 p.m. each day to 7 a.m., um, so not too many people out on the trail that time of day, but uh, when they do close it, they have set up a detour around to uh, Otter or Odell Road um, for pedestrians. Um, and that's just because they're working on overhead work. So they're doing some demolition, so pieces of chunks of concrete and things could fall on someone's head and we want to maintain pedestrian safety. So there's really no way around closing it. But um, they do say it should be done by the end of uh, this month. So hopefully short-lived and we can get our trail back. Uh, Woodgate, for those who have been in that area of town, it has the Woodgate realignment has started back up. Uh, and so far, we think the cabinets are on track to be out of our way by the time we need them. Uh, to get to that point on this latest round of construction. So um, fingers crossed that continues along. Um, Hill Street, uh, the Hill Street Extension Project is paving, or is the first round of paving was today. They'll finish paving it tomorrow. Um, so that road should be uh, done here pretty quick. Uh, that one hit a little earlier. Usually we're not paving full arterials, but that one was straightforward and simple enough that um, here we are early in the season finishing a project. So, so that's great. Uh, some uh, less unfortunate news on the southeast transmission main that was the big 24 inch trunk line that was going from 6800 in Sunnyside down through Fox Park to um, 6700 and East Oak Grove uh, the contractor um, was working on that and um, planned to do everything uh, this spring and be done about this time of year uh, they had they ended up uh, go into that halfway into that you know starting the construction of that their delivery stopped showing up of their pipe which came out of New Mexico um, so they kind of got stuck with about a one month gap in their project and were they were able to get the critical portions of it done which were time, the most time sensitive so that line is installed under the new Hill Street and then the installation through Fox Park is complete which we gave a milestone on that so that they could get the turf in place and ready to restore so that the impacts to the 
park users were as little as possible. So that's done, restored. We're still waiting on the grass to come up, obviously, but um, that should let us get that park back online here um, middle of summer. Uh, so the, the critical portions are done, but we're left with gaps in between. So if anybody's noticed a trench cut going down Niagara Hill or Hill Street um, and all that pipe stored on Hill Street, unfortunately that contractor also had contract commitments at the Montrose County Airport for their um, parking lot expansion and had to, they had a small window where they can go in and do that and still fit in and not disrupt the airport schedule. Um, so they're up there working on that right now and have um, taken a, a break from our project. So unfortunately, we won't see any progress on that until probably July, they'll be back on ours. Um, the original contract was until January of 2023. So they're still within compliance of the contract. We just have to look at a bunch of pipe alongside the road all summer. So. Um, and we, uh, we, don't, we weren't planning on that line coming into service this year anyway, so it's, it's not impactful to the operations of the system, mostly just to the motoring public dealing with gravel from the trench cuts and, and the pipe. So uh, unfortunate, but you know, it's just kind of the nature of construction these days as things come up. So, um, so that project will be resuming in July near Hill Street. Um, if you notice, there's kind of the pipe is just sticking out of the ground, waiting to continue on, and they'll march south from there starting in July. That's all the product updates again. Excellent, thank you. Council. I do have a question, Scott. I know we had curb and gutter to put in down on South Townsend before the uh, state started paving. Are we finished up with that? Is yep, yep, that's in place. There's a small patch they'll be doing, fin probably finishing up this week. Um, the way their the CDOT schedule is shaking out, they won't be in that area for um, probably at least a month and a half. So um, we're sitting plenty good on that piece of it. Good, thank you. Anyone else? Any other staff comments? Thank you. And now Youth City Council comments. After that great presentation, I'm thinking you got it all covered, but if you have anything else to say, now's your opportunity. Very good. We'll turn it over to City Council comments. Well, uh, I do have a couple of comments. Uh, first of all, uh, I wanted to thank Shana for the uh, new uh, big picture budget presentation. And uh, I, I uh, learned a lot about what's happening in the city of Montrose. There's a lot of people complaining about the, the potholes and, and the maintenance of the street. And I realized that it's not all the city's uh, problem. Uh, a lot of it has to do with uh, with finding employees that want to work for the city or contractors that have time to work for the city. So uh, I'm just saying be patient. I know the staff is working really hard to uh, to find subcontractors to do the work and uh, staff to do the work. I know that if uh, the report that I got was sometimes that uh, the staff is uh, is uh, jumping around doing a lot of different things that perhaps maybe they're not really uh, trained for but they work hard to get the projects done and and uh, get them completed uh, as soon as possible. So I just wanted to thank the staff and the workers for doing that. Very good. Mr. Reed? No, sir. I don't have anything. Thank you. Very good. Can I make one more comment? I'd like to thank the council, too, because uh, I was uh, quite impressed with some of the questions that were asked at the big budget uh, review for next year. Uh, so there's plenty of thought going into the, the budget process. and. Uh, there was definitely a lot of questions. Uh, so, anyway, Council, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gilbert. <laughs> Bill, did you have a comment? That's a given. I appreciate that. On behalf of the staff, I just want to say thanks for those comments. And it's been a, just a difficult run this year with staffing and trying to keep up with everything that needs to get done with minimal employees and we're not alone in that all around Colorado all around the country 
it seems like employees disappeared or potential employees just poof they were gone all of a sudden so we're doing a uh, HR teams working really hard with department heads to try to recruit people in and and we're going to do some creative recruitment things that we haven't done before and and uh, try to get the word out even more and uh, just one last thing I think we have a birthday on our city council today and uh, you, you might be 49 years young there at the end of the dais and uh, so hang around after the meeting we have some crumble cookies and we want to share with the group here I don't I'm not much on singing but if Barbara wants to lead a song I'm, then <laughs> I'm a really good singer from but I'm gonna far. pass thanks. so happy birthday to Doug Glassbell and uh, another quick comment is that if anybody in the public is interested in a position we have a number of our seasonal staff positions that are open we have a number of regular full-time employees positions that are open and we also are having a police recruitment activity on Saturday from 10 to 4 at the event center and for those people who may have a desire to get involved in law enforcement or even just want to learn more about what our recruitment process is there's an opportunity to come to the event center on Saturday and learn a lot more about what we do and how we do it so if there are no other comments would entertain a motion to adjourn and we are adjourned Thank you.